Hi guys, welcome back to TOEFL with Juva. If you want to take the TOEFL Home Edition, there are a few things you should know. There have also been some important updates recently. So today we are doing a TOEFL Home Quiz, where you can test whether you know the most important things about the TOEFL Home Edition. So get a piece of paper and a pen, write down your answers. Every correct answer is worth one point and you can get 10 points in total. After the test, put your score in the comments below. I'd love to know. By the way, if you want to get more tips about the TOEFL and if you want to download templates, subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss the next video. Let's get started, guys. Let's start with the first question. Which accounts do you have to create to take the TOEFL Home Edition? Is it A, an ETS account and a ProctorU account? Or B, only an ETS account? Or is it C, no account? I hope you guys wrote down your answer. So I'm telling you the correct answer now. The correct answer is B only an ETS account. This is a recent update. ETS has changed the procedure. Now you only need to create an ETS account. Previously, you needed to create a ProctorU account and an ETS account. And you needed to schedule your test in your ProctorU account. But now things have changed. You only need to create an ETS account and this is where you can also schedule your test. But of course, during your test, you will still be monitored by ProctorU. So this has not changed. Let's go on with question number two. How many transparency sheets are you allowed to use? A, one, B, three, or C, as many as I like. Write down your answer, guys. I hope you wrote it down. So I'm going to tell you the solution now. The correct answer is A. You're only allowed to use one transparency sheet. This is also an update. Previously, you were allowed to use as many transparency sheets as you liked. This has changed. ETS changed rules. You are only allowed to use one transparency sheet or one whiteboard. So obviously this will mean for many of you that you will have to erase your notes during your test. And this can be quite stressful because in the TOEFL Home Edition, you don't have much time. So you will need to find a way to quickly erase your notes during the TOEFL Home Edition. I'd recommend you guys practicing this before at home so that when you're starting the test, you know exactly how much space you will need for each task. And then you know exactly when you have to erase your notes and this won't come as a surprise to you. Let's go on with question number three. How can you start your test on test day? Is it A, I click on the check-in button on the ProctorU website. B, I click on the link in the confirmation email from ETS. Or C, I click on the start button on the ETS website. Which one is it, guys? The correct answer is B. You click on the link in the confirmation email from ETS. This is also something that has changed. Previously, you needed to log in into your ProctorU account and there was a button that said check in and you could start your test by clicking on that button. But now you don't have a ProctorU account anymore. You schedule your test in your ETS account and after that, ETS will send you a confirmation email and in this email, there is a link. You click on that link on test day and that's how you start your test. Question number four. How much time do you have after your schedule time to begin your check-in? A, up to 15 minutes. B, up to 10 minutes. 
or C, up to 12 minutes? Write down the answer, guys. Is it A, B or C? And the correct answer is C, up to 12 minutes. This means that if more than 12 minutes pass after your scheduled time and you try to check in, you won't be able to check in anymore. And this means that you can't take the test and you won't get a refund. So on test day, guys, make sure that you are punctual. Let's go on with question number five. How can you log in into the ETS browser? A. I enter my ID and password. B. There is no login option in the ETS browser. Or C. I don't log in. The proctor does that for me. Which is the correct answer, guys? Is it A, B or C? The correct answer is C. You don't have to log in by yourself. The proctor will enter the credentials for you. Guys, this point has caused a lot of confusion in the past. Many of you have asked me in the comments, how can I log in in the ETS browser? I can't find my ID and password. And people were desperate. And I totally understand that because it's quite confusing because when you start the ETS browser, there is this login option and you're like, okay, I need to enter an ID and I need to enter a password. Where can I find it? But the answer is you don't have to. The proctor will enter all the credentials for you on test day. So you don't need to worry about that at all. Let's go on with question number six. During the TOEFL Home Edition, you will be told that you must use a headset for some tasks. What do you do? A. I ignore that. B. I put a headset on. C. I wait for the proctor to tell me that I can put my headset on. Which one is the correct answer, guys? Is it A, B or C? I hope you wrote down your answer. I will tell you the solution now. The correct answer is A. I ignore that. I know this is quite confusing, guys, but it's such an important rule and you must absolutely be aware of that. If you put on a headset in the TOEFL Home Edition, your test will be cancelled because headsets are not allowed in the TOEFL Home Edition. So now you may ask, but why does the test tell me that I should put my headset on if it's not allowed in the TOEFL Home Edition? That's an excellent question. And the answer is that in the TOEFL Home Edition, you get exactly the same test that you would get in the test center. And in the test center, you must put on a headset for some tasks. And that's why the test is telling you, please put your headset on now. But if you're taking the TOEFL at home, you must absolutely ignore this message because otherwise your test will be canceled and you won't get a refund. Even if you say, look, I had absolutely no idea that I wasn't allowed to put my headset on. ETS state that on their website, it's stated in the rules that you are not allowed to use a headset. It's also stated there that you should ignore this message during the TOEFL Home Edition. So remember that when taking the TOEFL at home, ignore the message and just go on without any headset. Let's go on with question number seven. How long is the break in the TOEFL Home Edition? A. 5 minutes B. 10 minutes or C. 20 minutes Guys, I hope you wrote down your answer. The correct answer is B. 10 minutes. The break in the TOEFL Home Edition is 10 minutes long. There will be a message on your screen that you are allowed to have a break now. Do not go before you get this message. You are not allowed to leave during the TOEFL Home Edition if you are not told to do so. So wait until you get this message 
have a break, get something to drink or do something else and then return on time. Make sure that you are punctual. You are not allowed to have a break longer than 10 minutes. When I took the TOEFL Home Edition, I had a look at my watch. I had a break of about seven minutes. Then I returned because I wanted to make sure that I'm really on time. And when I returned, I wrote the proctor a message in the chat box and told him that I had returned because I wanted to make sure that everybody can see that I'd returned on time. So this is a tip for you guys. If you want to be really sure that everyone knows that you returned on time, write a message in the chat box and so the proctor knows that you've returned and that everything's fine. Question number eight. Can you use an external microphone in the TOEFL Home Edition? A. No, that's not allowed. B. Yes, but only if it's not part of a headset. C. Yes, without any restrictions. Which answer is the correct one, guys? Is it A, B or C? And the correct answer is B. Yes, you are allowed to use an external microphone in the TOEFL Home Edition, but only if it's not part of a headset. You may remember that we were just talking about it, that headsets are not allowed during the TOEFL Home Edition. So if you have an external microphone, make sure that it's not part of a headset. In this case, you can use it without any worries. Let's go on with question number nine. What do you have to do after your TOEFL test? A. Show the proctor that I erased my notes. B. Tell the proctor that I finished my test. C. Nothing. Which one is the correct answer, guys? Is it A, B or C? Write down your answer and here comes the solution. The correct answer is A. You must show the proctor that you erased your notes at the end of the TOEFL Home Edition. And this is a really important point, guys, because you are not allowed to take your notes with you. That's why ETS wants you to write on transparency sheets or a whiteboard and that's why they want you to use a non-permanent pen so that you can erase your notes in the end. So please guys don't forget to show the proctor that you erased your notes at the end of the test. Take your transparency sheet or your whiteboard and hold it directly into the camera so that a proctor can be sure that you erased your notes. And here comes the final question. Question number 10. How long do you have to wait for your online TOEFL scores? Is it A, three to five days, B, six to 10 days, or C, eight to 12 days? Is it A, B or C, guys? I hope you wrote down your answer and I really hope that you get this last point. The correct answer is B, six to 10 days. I just like to add that you usually have to wait for six to 10 days. Sometimes it may take a bit longer. So please guys, if it takes a bit longer, don't panic. If you have the time, I'd recommend waiting for a few more days. And if your scores are not available by then, contact ETS and ask them why it's taking so long so that in case there are any issues, you can figure that out and you can check what you can do. That's it. This was the TOEFL Home Edition quiz. I hope you had fun, guys. Don't forget to put your score in the comments below. I'd love to know. If you like, download the illustration. You can find the link in the description below. And if you want to get more tips about the TOEFL and download templates, subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss the next video. I'd love to see you here next time. Bye bye.